Kindly. Thank you for your courtesy. <coughs> Senate President Vicente Soto III, the members of the Senate, House Speaker Pantaleon Alvarez, and the members of the House of Representatives, Vice President Maria Leonor Robredo, former Presidents Fidel V. Ramos, Joseph Herzito Estrada, and Gloria Macapagal Arroyo, his Excellency Gabriel Cacha and esteemed members of the Diplomatic Corps, Executive Secretary Salvador Medaldia, and the members of the Cabinet, Acting Chief Justice Antonio Carpio, and the Justices of the Supreme Court, my fellow workers in government, mga kababayan. About two years ago, I so solemnly took my oath as a worker of the national government. I was an inspired, as inspired to institute real changes for the greater good of the Filipino people. As I was greatly overwhelmed then by the daunting challenges that lay ahead. Two years later, my solid commitment to directly and decisively address our nation's collective challenges remains. It has not wavered. In truth, it has even gotten stronger through adversity and the desire to give the people the most we can within my term in this government. Let me begin by putting it bluntly. The war against illegal drugs is far from over. But before the war resulted in the seizure of illegal drugs worth millions of pesos, today they run billions in peso value. I can only shudder at the harm that those drugs could have cost had they reached the streets of every province, city, municipality, barangay, and community throughout the country. That is why the, the illegal drugs war will not be sidelined. Instead, it will be as relentless and chilling if you will, as on the day it began. These drug dealers know fully well that their business is against the law. They know the consequences of the criminal acts, especially when caught in flagrantly delecto, and they violently resist arrest. They know that illegal drugs waste our lives dysfunctionalize families and ruin relationships. They know that once hooked, addicts will lie slowly, slow deaths, and yet they persist in doing what they do, oblivious to the terrible harm that they cause to the people and communities. And when illegal drugs operations turn nasty and bloody, Advocates of human rights lash at and pillory our law enforces and this administration to no end. Sadly, I have yet to hear, really, howls of protest from the human rights advocates and church leaders against drug lordism, drug dealing, and drug pushing as forceful and vociferous as the ones directed against the alleged errant enforcers in the fight against these social scores. If you think that I can be dissuaded from continuing this fight because of our demonstrations, your protests, which I find the way 
misdirected. Then you got it all wrong. Your concern is human rights. Mine is human lives. <laughs> the lives of our youth are being wasted and families are destroyed. And all because of the chemical called Shabu, cocaine, cannabis, and heroin. Human rights to me means giving Filipinos, especially those at the society's fringes, a decent and dignified future to the social and physical infrastructures necessary to better their lives, the lives and freedoms and the hard-earned property of every Filipino whose condition we wish to improve shall be protected from criminals, terrorists, corrupt officials, and traffickers and contrabands. You worry about the present. I am concerned both the present and the future. I worry about the future because I know what crimes can do to the youth of this country if not stopped. Crimes can make human cesspools of succeeding generation. I will not allow it to happen, not during my term. Time and again, I have stressed that corruption must stop. Corruption <laughs> is like a leech that it bleeds the government of one's program, press infrastructure, and social development projects. It saps the moral or the morale of dedicated and honest government workers, and corruption destroys those who succumb to its temptation and eventually. It is the innocent who will suffer and bear its horrible consequences. The love of money is corrosive and sadly, the desire to make the easy kind of being imaginative and manipulative corrupts absolutely. Stolen wealth does not make the thief respectable. Neither will the trappings of wealth mask or cap is stink that thievery exudes. One day, justice will catch up with those who steal government funds. And when the day comes, it will be the public who will have its retribution. While we run after those who steal the people's money, we are also enhancing the government's delivery of frontline services. I thank Congress for the swift passage of the ease of doing business, which is significant. <laughs> Fight against corruption and improving service of delivery. We need to sustain our momentum, and I hereby direct all government units, makinig sana kayo, and government agencies to faithfully implement this law and simply simplify the process. Hinihingi ko yan sa lahat na sa gobyerno under my control and supervision. Huwag ko kayong magkamali. I particularly call the attention of the agencies with the number of red tape related reports from the public. Make your services truly customer friendly our people deserve efficient, effective, and responsive government services. They deserve nothing less. <laughs> kayo lang ayaw eh. Gusto ng tao, kayo yung binabayaran, make your living from the pockets of the people, and you have a lousy and corrupt bureaucracy. 
I have friends and political supporters whom I appointed to public office and then dismissed or caused to resign. I need not mention their names or recount the circumstances surrounding the removal or resignation. Media has more than amply reported that. I value friendship. Make no mistake about it. But it has its limits. This is a lonely place I am hemmed in. Do not make it lonelier by forcing me to end our friendship because you gave me the reason to end it. It pains me to no end the loss of friendships. And that is why I appeal to you to help me in my cause so that our friendship will endure. For as long as I can remember, the bulk of the income generated in Mindanao used to be remitted to what we in Mindanao refer as the Imperial Manila to fund national projects primarily in the Metro Manila area, leaving a pittance to Mindanao as a share thereof. Mindanao was dubbed as the land of promise, and Mindanaoans say in the region that is so because what it got from government through the years were promises, promises, and more promises. We aim to rectify that the received observation, and as a matter of fact, we are now in the process of fulfilling that promise to significant increases in the budget for Mindanao. At the end of my term, I hope to see the promise of Mindanao fulfilled, or at, least the, at the very least, approaching fulfillment. Be that as it may, Mindanao poses at the crossroads of history. One road leads to harmony and peace. The other to war and human suffering. Despite all that has been said or against the Bangsamoro organic law by all sectoral groups, I make the solemn commitment that this administration will never deny our Muslim brothers and sisters the basic legal tools to chart their own destiny within the constitutional framework of our country. When the approved version is transmitted and received by my office, the law has been passed, actually, and I intend to give me 48 hours to sign it and ratify the law. Babasahin ko pa bago ako pipirmahan. Baka may siningit kayo dyan na hindi maganda para sa para sa ibang tao. We will need loads of understanding and patience to endure and overcome the birth pangs or pains of the new beginning. To me, war is not an option. We have been through the catastrophe in Marawi. We have seen the horror, the devastation, and the human toll, and the displacement of both Christians and Muslims alike. I have made a pledge that ISIS terrorists or groups or its allies will never gain foothold in our country. Yet, when what remained of the decimated Maoti ISIS group in Marawi finally saw the error of their ways and expressed their desire to be reintegrated into society, we welcomed them with open arms and embarked on a genuine effort to embrace a peaceful, productive life for them. We owe it to our fallen soldiers and police officers in Marawi and elsewhere to put an end to the bloodshed and seek 
the path of true peace, a peace that will last beyond this lifetime and whose dividends our children will reap. On international relations, we shall continue to assert and pursue an independent foreign policy. Our long-term national development and national security goals come first. We shall continue to reach out to all nations regardless of their prevailing political persuasions or proximity to or distance from our shore, so long as this nation wish us well. Our stronger bonds with our ASEAN friends have made possible our trilateral border patrols with Indonesia and Malaysia, which has since then put out of business sea pirates, piracy, and other terrorists who used to infest our shared seas. This is a testament to the readiness of our country and our good neighbors to make regional peace and security our shared responsibility. We have successfully hosted the 50th ASEAN anniversary and the 31st ASEAN summit last November 2017. We have shown the world that we are capable when we work together the ASEAN events showcased not only the world-renowned Filipino hospitality and organizational capabilities, but also our artistic talent. I would like to commend the National ASEAN Organizing Council, led by no less than my Executive Secretary, Salvador Medialdia. Our re-energized relations with China has also led to an unprecedented level of cooperation between our nations on the war against transitional crimes. Our shared intelligence led to the discovery and dismantling of the clandestine Shebo Laboratories and the arrest of Chinese chemists with the Dragon organization called Wu Syndicate. Our improved relationship with China, however, does not mean that we will waver in our commitment to defend our interests in the West Philippine Sea. <laughs> this is why we engage China to this bilateral and multilateral platform such as the ASEAN China and the Philippines-China Bilateral Consultation Mechanism. Opening lines of communication and amicably managing differences have led to positive development that include renewed access of Filipino fishermen to the areas in dispute in the Philippines, uh, West Philippine Sea. Participation in the sea and China dialogue has also resulted to the draft framework for the Code of Conduct in the South China Sea, which intends to resolve peaceful disputes by peaceful means. We admire our Filipino migrant workers for their selflessness and courage in enduring the hardships of living away from home to provide for their families. You epitomize the innate resilience of the nation. You have shown your willingness to toil and sacrifice day in and day out for the long-term good of your family, loved ones. You have also contributed greatly to, con to the national economy, even as you help in small and big ways to the economies of your inter uh, our international partners. This is why we strongly condemn the deaths and abuses experienced by Filipino migrant workers in the hands of their foreign employers. I have said this before and I say it again. I am a worker of government and it is my vow to make sure that your well-being remains our foremost foreign policy concern. It is for this reason 
that we are continuing to work with the host nations to ensure the welfare of our countrymen. I appeal to all host governments to help us as true and dependable partners in this endeavor. I have always believed that no matter how well-intentioned a leader is, no matter how, how well-conceived may be his mission, if he lacks the political will to do what needs to be done, they can only end up a failure and a hopeless dreamer. As a worker of government, I promise to do whatever it would take to give all Filipinos a comfortable life, fighting powerful interests and making sacrifices. My obligation is to promote and uphold the greatest good for the greatest number. Our campaign against ENDO has resulted in the regularization of the more than 300,000 workers as of early this month. On May 1 of this year, I signed Executive Order 51, which sought to protect the workers' right to security of tenure. Read my lips. I understand that this does not satisfy all sectors. I share their sentiment. I truly do. Much as I would like to do the impossible, that power is not vested upon me by the Constitution, and neither will I make both ends meet even if I will violate the laws to achieve that purpose. Simply, it is not part of my territory. That is why I add mine to their voices in asking Congress to pass legislation ending the practice of contractualization once and for all. All farmers, especially our coconut farmers, form a significant part of the basic sectors of society. It is from the toil of their hands that we put food on the table. It is my hope that we finally see this through. I urge you, Congress, to convene the Bilateral Conference Committee and pass at the soonest possible time the bill establishing the Coconut Farmers Trust Fund. I pray that you will do it. My administration remains firm in, in its resolve to ensure that the country's telecommunications services are reliable, inexpensive, and secure. A draft terms of reference for the entry of a new major industry player is at hand. The terms will be fair, reasonable, and comprehensive. It will be inclusive, so it will be open to all interested private parties, both foreign and local. The only condition is that the chosen entity must provide the best possible services at reasonably accessible prices. However, our efforts to usher in a new major player shall render futile if we do not improve its odds of success in an industry that has long been dominated by a well entrains duopoly. We shall therefore lower interconnection rates between all industry players, not only, in this, not only to lessen the cost to the customers, as it will also lower the cost of incoming players to access existing networks. A market environment that is more conducive to competition this is a policy which is crucial to ensure that our solution to our telecommunication problems will be both meaningful and lasting. In the last two years, experience has taught me that lack of consultation or insufficiency of information can at times lead to rash judgments. 
Eftan when I am unsure of the most appropriate course of action to take given the problem, it's a factual menu and the desired end, I never fail to consult to discuss options with persons whom I trust and whose advice I value. When I decided to establish Malasakit centers in Cebu, Tacloban, and Iloilo, my longtime aide, Bongo, and his team became instrumental in arriving at the right decision through proper consultation. <laughs> Deliberations with the proper agencies also made me decide to push for and eventually approve both the Tertiary Education Act and the increase in the salary of our men in uniform, our soldiers and our policemen. Boracay Island, <clears throat> widely regarded as one of our country's treasures and admired worldwide for its natural beauty, has sadly become the representation of governance and government's negligence including mine. I could not allow this decay to continue. Decisive action has long been overdue, recognizing that we are mere stewards of our natural resources. And I said, enough is enough. We intend to restore its environmental integrity alongside measures to alleviate those whose livelihood were momentarily affected. Environmental protection and ensuring the health of our people cannot be overemphasized. Thus, our actions in Boracay mark the beginning of a new national effort. This is just for the other uh, tourist destinations needing urgent rehabilitation and enforcement of environmental and other laws shall soon follow. I urge local government units to proactively enforce our laws and not wait for us to swoop down on your areas just to do your duty and work. Some other time, I would have to discuss uh, local government units. What has happened to Barakai is just an indication of the long overdue need to rationalize in a holistic, sustainable manner the utilization, management, and development of our lands. I therefore urge the Senate urgent, urgently pass the National Land Use Act to put in place a national land use policy that will address our competing land requirements for food, housing, business, and environmental conservation. We need to do this now to help safeguard the present and future generations. We have to earnestly undertake initiatives to reduce our vulnerabilities to, na of to natural hazards and bolster our resilience to the impact of national disasters and climate change. Uh, as I have stated last year, we must learn from the experiences from the super typhoon Yolanda and other mega disasters and from global best practices. We need a truly empowered department characterized by a unity of command, science-based approach and full-time focus on natural hazards and disasters, and the wherewithal to take charge of the disaster risk reduction, preparedness response with better recovery and faster rehabilitation. Hence, we in the cabinet have approved for immediate endorsement to Congress the passage of a law creating the Department of Disaster Management an interagency, just like FEMA, 
We don't know if it's uh, it an effective agency in the United States government. An interagency crafted and a high priority measure aim at genuinely strengthening our country's capacity to reliance on natural disasters. I fervently appeal to Congress to pass this bill with utmost urgency. Our people's safety requires, requirements cannot wait. Ours is a rich and beautiful country. Indeed, add to that a great number of people equipped with technical expertise and professionalism, and you have a country poised to soar and take this place among the world's economic and financial eagles. God willing, inshallah. Nature enjoyed us with its wealth to be tough for the benefit of all generations. My policy in the utilization of these resources is non-negotiable. The protection of the environment must be top priority. And extracted resources must be used for the benefit of the Filipino people, not just a select few. Do not just give me taxes. I can get it from other sources. Give me what needs to be given to my countrymen. To the mining industry, I see this once again and maybe for the last time. Do not destroy the environment or compromise our resources. Repair what you have mismanaged. Try to change management radically because this time you will have restrictive policies, the prohibition of open pit mining is one. It is destroying my country. It is destroying the environment. It will destroy the world of tomorrow for our children. I again warm responsible miners along with their patrons to stop destroying our watersheds, recharge areas, forests, and aquatic resources. You can no longer fish in our rivers. It's all contaminated. And the color is not even brown or purple or white. It's black. You want to see it? I will invite you. We can go to the Walwal and the other mining areas. And I'm sure you will puke with what is happening to this country. Expect reforms, radical ones. I do not intend to quarrel with anybody who demanded, but for as long as I am here, I said, you will just have to contend with me. Expect you to do your part in ensuring our nation's sustainable development starting now. Exhort all concerned agencies and local government units to uphold the concept of intergenerational responsibility in exploring and, and the utilization of our mineral wealth, protection, and preservation of our biodiversity, anchored in the right to a balanced and healthy ecology. I applaud Congress for the timely passage of the train law. You have made funds available to build better roads, bridges, and improve health and education and strengthen our safety and security. Some have incorrectly blamed our effort towards a fairer tax system. For all the price increases in the past months and, and some irresponsibly suggesting to stop train implementation, we cannot and should not. We need this for sustainable growth that leaves no Filipino left behind. Train is already helping poor families and senior citizens cope up with rising prices. 
we have distributed unconditional cash transfer to 4 million people and will help 6 million more this year. Following the one peso discount per liter in gas stations, we have also started releasing fuel vouchers to public utility, jeeps and other valid franchises. Further, we have fast-tracked the distribution of NFA rice to provide, to provide affordable rice for all. Excuse me. This year, we are giving 149 billion pesos worth of subsidies to the poor and, to the poor and vulnerable. Next year, the amount will be increased to 169 billion pesos. But no amount of subsidy can help the poor if some businesses take advantage of their situation to make more money. I ask businesses to cooperate with us in charging a fair price. To help stabilize rice prices, we also need to address the issue of artificial rice shortage. I now ask all the rice hoarders, cartels, and their protectors. You know that I know who you are. Stop messing with the people. I hate to power sometimes is not a good thing, but I hope I will not have to use it against you. Consider yourselves warm, mend your ways now, or the full force of the state shall be brought to bear upon you. I am directing all intelligence agencies to unmask the perpetrators of this economic sabotage and our law enforcement agencies to bring them to justice. We are also working on long-term solutions on top of this agenda to lower the price of rice. We need to switch from the current quota system in importing rice to a tariff system where rice can be imported more freely. This will give us additional resources for our farmers, reduce the price of rice by up to, up to seven pesos per kilo and lower inflation significantly. I ask Congress to prioritize this crucial reform, which I have certified as urgent today. Alam mo, ako humingi talaga ng tolong. Uh, business is really for profit. I understand that. But uh, Philippines has always been the, the playground for, you know, scoundrels and uh, those who do it without really considering the plight of the others. It's all conscience. When I run for public office, I promise to do whatever it takes to give all Filipinos a comfortable life, even if it means fighting powerful interests. I am committed to a comprehensive tax reform, and I ask Congress to continue the job. Package 2 will be lower corporate income taxes, especially for our small businesses. Lower taxes mean they will have more money to invest and create more jobs. More than 99% of our businesses are micro, small or medium enterprises and employ around 65% of our workers. The enactment of the package to is what stands between today and the millions of jobs in the near future. Congressman Koa, Gonzalez, Abo, and Green, and Botokabi as well, as the Swansing family, filed versions of package to last March 2018. Salamat po. And I support their push to shepherd the bill. I hope the Senate will follow suit Maybe tomorrow, sir. This matter is urgent. Do not be part of the problem by ignoring it. 
I hope to sign package to before the year ends. I urge Congress to pass it in form that satisfy our goals and serve the interests of the many, not just the wealthy few. By the end of July 2018, all five packages of my tax reform would have been submitted to Congress. Apart from train, rice tarification, and package two, they include the mining, alcohol, and tobacco tax increase, reform in property valuation, reform in capital income, and financial taxes, and an amnesty program. I urge Congress to take them seriously and pass them in succession, for there is no chance that we can deliver our promises without an equitable tax system. One of the most important trusts of this administration, mid medium term development plan, is to cover all Filipinos against financial health risks. That is why I have directed concerned agencies to streamline the various sources of financial assistance for the people with health-related needs. We're currently institu inst institutionalizing the unified implementation of the no-balance billing policy, through which the government and our private health care providers can work out a system that will provide an order of charging of medical expenses. Much needs to be done to improve our health care system, which remains highly fragmented, resulting in disparity in health outcomes between the rich and the poor, and in the urban areas and rural. While investments in health have increased over the several years, several policy and operational bottlenecks have constrained universal health care for this country. We shall pool our resources for health services under the Philippines' institutionalized primary care as a prerequisite to access higher level of health care and supplement human resource, resource gaps in the LGUs through a national health workforce support system. This will ensure that every Filipino gets the appropriate affordable and quality health services in appropriate facilities and will be protected from financial burden due to sickness. To this end, I urge the speedy passage of the Universal Health Care Bill authored by former Representative Harry Roque. Strong. Strong political determination, not political ambition, is the guiding light. I have no illusions of occupying this office one day longer than what the Constitution under which I was elected permits, or under whatever Constitution there might be. Four administrations before me have tried uh, to amend the Constitution to be able to introduce amendments and uh, reservations of the Charter, revisions rather to the Charter, but none of them was uh, successfully done for one reason or another. I therefore consider it a distinct honor and privilege to receive earlier, to have received earlier from the consultative committee that I created the federal cons constitution that will truly embody the ideal aspirations of all the Filipino people. I thank all the members of the committee, especially those who came out from their retirement for their valuable services in crafting this draft federal constitution. I would like to extend my particular gratitude to former Chief of Justice Renato Pono and former Senate President Aquilino Pimentel, Jr. 
I am confident that the Filipino people will stand behind us as we introduce this new fundamental law that will not only strengthen our democratic institutions but also create an environment for every Filipino, regardless of his social status, religion, or ideology, will have an equal opportunity to grow and create a future that he or she can proudly bequeath to the succeeding generations. My countrymen, I will not bore you with the litany of this administration's projects completed otherwise in the process. That would be too self-serving. I have instead caused to be prepared a written report on what has, what was and what has been done in the months and probably in the, in the years to come. The report shall be made available within the next few days. I was informed that satellite facilities were set up by the Presidential Communications Operations Office in certain far-flung barangays. So as of today, the residents of these communities can watch the state of the nation and for the first time see you on TV. I hope you'd have enjoyed the experience. And ending, may I quote, I have always quoted, but uh, in my previous talks. Uh, one American that I salute, uh, the great uh, Abraham Lincoln. And this has been, I've been in government for the last, if I completed my, if I complete my term, inshallah, God willing, I would have served government for 40 years. And uh, I came across this uh, statement which has been with me since when I was a fiscal in the 70s. And he said, if I were to try to read, much less answer all attacks made on me, this shop, the presidency, might as well be closed for any other business. I do the very best I know how, the very best I can, and I mean to keep doing so until the end. If the end brings me out all right, what, is, what has been said against me won't amount to anything. But if the end brings me out wrong, ten angels of God swearing that as I was right would make no difference. Dakang salamat kaninyong tanah.